See, I told you I'd be back. Not as often, but I'd be back. So, you've looked at the title of this film and you know that it's about the TDK MAXG because I've done the SAXG and I've done the MAR, but I've never actually looked at the MAXG. Now, if you remember in this video about metal cassettes, I did this with an MAR. Um, uh, ah, bugger it. You know what? You're a long time dead, and I'll be a long time dead. There we go. We'll we'll have this nice MAR, and literally just just doing that. That that literally was like taking forty pounds and just screwing it up and throwing it in the fire. Remember that? Yeah, that caused a bit of controversy. I mean, remember in them days, you know the. MARs were worth a lot of money and MAXGs now, I mean, you know, these are worth a serious amount of money. I mean, you've got to be some kind of nutter to do that with one. Sorry, did you miss that? Let's, let's do this again, okay? There we go. So, the MAXG basically came from 1986 and it had MAX tape in it, but it had it inside the now well known and well revered metal alloy shell, which um, they call these, what is it? The, oh, let's have a look. They call it the RS2 cassette mechanism there we go so yeah so basically we have an, an old perspex sort of side as you can see all perspex then alloy frame and then max tape if we look can we see i think this has the layer we can see the little bit of the white powder which is known of tdk metals at least late tdk metals now we can sort of see it there but it's not a biggie it's not degradation of mold, just a fast forward and a rewind, it's good. And it's also got the little red spoke and the blue hub retainers there. Now, these hubs actually also turned up in a cassette which I don't own, but I'd actually love to. It's this one, the um, TDK DSX. I'm thinking off the top of my head. I'll show you a picture of it now, and if it's wrong, then it's wrong. But yeah, so very strong shell, heavy very luxurious great looking we've got the tabs at the top like in the MAR where basically you can remove them and pop them back in again in case you want to uh, re-record on this so yeah so that's that's the MAXG I mean inside I mean the, the actual J card it, it comes flat but it does actually have an edge to it so you can proper fold this up here and then you can have a proper J card, but it's pretty plain J card. You know. Reference standard two mechanism. The characteristics of the RS2 mechanism perfectly matched the tape and ensure smooth tape transport. The three layer mechanism structure incorporates a precision molded guide block and stainless steel tape pins within the die cast alloy frame. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, it just means nowadays that it's very heavy, it looks fantastic and they're worth a lot of money. Uh, the J car, well, sorry, the stickers are as they are. Quite nice. Does it say anything special on the back? How to use the plugs, yes. Plugs, okay. But uh, yeah, I mean, we didn't look at the actual uh, tape itself, so let's have a look at the uh, wrapper itself before you know, I ripped them off there, but yeah, it, I think we all know what these are now. We all know what these are about. What does it say at the back? The use of ultra fine Finovix. So fine Finovix, metal particles ensures low noise levels and high mold characteristics. Yes, that's it. That's why we want it for. So yeah, it's like, oh, oh. I'm sorry, it's like some sort of sickness taking me over. Because since I've stopped selling cassettes, I can't stand seal cassettes. Who wants seal cassettes? I want them open. I want to enjoy them. I want to play with, look, look, look at this. Look, look, look hang on. Uh, three brand new MHGs just 
just just being held in the hands oh isn't that lovely isn't that fantastic oh look at that quality ah, pleasure you can't measure so enough of this I don't know whether you want to call it porn or whether you want to call it terrorism but uh, yeah let's take one of these beautiful cassettes now and play some music on it and see if it's all show and no go or whether these really are one of the finest cassettes ever made. So those of you that saw my little video about why I've decided to embrace vinyl will notice that I actually have a new deck. It's the uh, Technics SL1200GR and the Audio Technica deck, uh, yeah, it was a fine entry level deck right up until the point that it stopped working properly. It was suffering from mad wow and flutter and I took it back to where I got it from which was a local hi-fi shop and uh, he uh, set it up and said, yeah, it's suffering from wow, bad wow and flutter. He goes, do you want me to give you another one? And I said, mm, I'll tell you what, let me put some money to and get the deck that I really wanted all along, but wasn't sure about when I was just starting out in vinyl. Because the, the 1200, you know, it, it, to me, it's a dragon of decks insofar as, yes, there are better decks than this. But when I was young, I have family members and friends, dads who had this deck, and to me it was always the ultimate record deck, just like the Dragon was always the ultimate cassette deck, so there are better, but I don't care. Um, this one I've equipped with an Autophon Red to begin with. Yeah, 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 I know there's better, there's blues and there's bronzes and there's blacks. Chances are when the Autophon Red starts wearing out, I'll replace it with a blue. Um, but the red sounds, well, this combo sounds a lot better than the Auto Technica, I've got to say. So, let me just lower the old camera tripod down now with uh, very little finesse. Ooh. Hey, it's nice and notchy, but you see, I don't do many videos anymore, so I don't really need to uh, have an expensive tripod. Look at that. Oh, wobble, wobble. So, in fact, I'm going to do a quick shot cut now. So that was smooth, wasn't it? So what is that beautiful blue disc on there? Well, it is the uh, second disc of This Is Synthwave 3. As you know, I now have a record company called Red Manor Records. And this is the newly released This Is Synthwave 3, a double disc, colored, heavyweight release, 20 tracks from upcoming artists. And some of you know that I used this is Synthwave 2 on a previous video. We have a few of these back in stock if you missed out on that. And just to complete it, we didn't want to have This is Synthwave 2 and 3 out without reissuing the original This is Synthwave. Oh yeah. And if you want to know what all these sound like, go to the Red Manny YouTube channel where I have put up playthrough videos of all three. In fact, I'm going to upload the other two onto this channel after I've uploaded this video so it's all complete but this track i'm going to play now is by my producer alter ego villa rosso coming off my forthcoming album twin turbo and it doesn't feature me singing you'll be glad to hear it features the wonderful vocals of sandor gavid on this one and this is my sort of late 80s pop song couldn't sleep last night so what i'm going to do is let's see how we can do this as unsmoothly as possible because i'm out of practice i'm going to fire off the maxg down here so bear with me okay we can hear that and then i'm going to uh put the needle on the record without hopefully doing a needle drop let's see if i can do this nope bit of uh, static there come on let's justify my love Couldn't sleep last night
there we have it. I don't think anyone can say that didn't sound virtually identical to the source, apart from the stuttering and the fact that you saw the indicator change from source to tape, you'd be really able to tell. Is this the finest cassette ever made? Uh, I don't know. I honestly don't know. I mean, yeah, there's the vertex and the the MGX from Denon uh, and then there's the Sony Metal Masters and then there's the Metal ESs. The point is at this sort of level they're all superb and anyone that said they could tell the difference in a blind test is lying. They're just superb. This, this, uh, I know I said that the Metal ES is my favourite shell of all time, the 8586 Metal ES with the clear side bits, but this feels ultra special. If these were the same sort of money as a Metal ES, would I think this was a better shell? Possibly. But all I know is, this is a beautiful looking cassette, it feels beautiful in the hand, and records beautifully. 
Is it worth what they go for? No, because no expensive cassette is really worth what they go for. Even the cheapest metals now, you're lucky to get for less than £20. And you can buy the source again for less than that. You buy them because you want them. But if cassettes are your thing, you really should have at least one of these. You should experience one of them. Because as you heard, and as you can see, they are quite wonderful. The truth. So there we go, the MAXG, an absolute legend at the time, and even more of a legend now. Worth every penny? Yeah, if you can afford it, get one. If you can't, who knows, look may smile on you. But I'm going to address the elephant in the room. Why did I tear open three of them like a madman? Is it some sort of totemistic thing to say, ha, while the people that have started doing cassette videos, while I've been away or fishing type zeros out of bins at thrift stores. I'm tearing open MAXGs like a madman. Is it just me saying, I'm still the daddy, don't you get any, uh, any ideas? Possibly, but not in this case. The reason why is because I wanted to make this. The this is Synthwave Metal Signature Collection. And basically what this is, is all three, this is Synthwave albums, but we've got the first one recorded on my Dragon, the second one on my ZX9, and the third one on my CR7. And this is a, a one of one collection, which I wanted to do on something a bit special. In this case, the MAXG is what I chose. Why the MHC? Because it just looks awesome and it sounds awesome and uh, it feels great. But why do it at all? Because I want to. Simple as that. Sometimes the best reason to do anything, as long as you're not hurting anybody, is because you want to. So I've recorded this on three of the finest decks ever. You have not done a Tomberg! Yeah. And um, I just wanted to see if anyone out there was actually mad enough to buy something like this. So if you want this, I don't know how long it'll last. It's custom, it's one of one, and it will set you back £299.99. And when you think of how much an MAXG costs, the fact these have just been opened, you'll appreciate I'm not really making any money on this at all. It's not a profit thing. It's a sheer, why the hell not? No sod else has done it type thing. I know there's been other companies releasing you know, classical music from small scale orchestras you've never heard of on the other MAXGs, but has anyone done anything quite like this, which is too big to get in shot? I don't know, and I don't care, but uh, I bet you it'll sell. So anyhow, that was just another little video there. I may come and do another video in the future. Who knows, but uh, happy taping. I hope you're all kept safe out there and you've all been keeping the flame alive, taping away and ripping up of them new old stock ones. But for me from now, all I'm going to say is cheerio. Maybe I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.